Hello there, this is Hans Forschner with Napkin Engineering Network. This video highlights the SoundPlan Noise version 9 software with a focus on the geodatabase. This video is for educational purpose only and does not replace any software training. In the video description below, please find the download links for the 32-bit and 64-bit SoundPlan version 9 software. I will focus on the version 9 geodatabase graphic user interface. The geodatabase has been completely overhauled in regards to the options, dialogues, menus, and online map services. Although the GUI has changed, the data structuring and features in terms of data compilation and editing are, for the most part, the same. The video discusses the Situation Manager, the Ribbon, and Docking concept. Let's get started. So here we can see the Sound Plan Manager. Nothing has changed in that respect. We still can access the different parts of the program. Here we have the geodatabase. If you start a new project and open up the geodatabase, the program automatically jumps right into the geodatabase and starts with some default situation name and geofile name. In this case, I have already a training project loaded, so I open up the geodatabase and it will open up the situation manager. The situation manager here on the left hand side, we can go select projects, we can go uh, here again situation manager, we can go to the recent situations that have been opened, we can uh, look up uh, situations that we cre recently uh, worked on. With the pin we can um, pin that into the recent section so with that uh, you can uh, have multiple pins for multiple projects and jump from one project situation to another. Um, so you maybe play around with that. On the options you'll see some of the presettings in terms of the geodatabase. Here we have a couple of additional parameters. The bitmap zoom box, you want to turn it on or turn it off. There is a search radius uh, for the, around the cursor for other objects and that's in terms of the aerial or the, the pixel sizes of an aerial uh, beside kind of, uh, a distance. Then we have angle steps, and then also uh, we can zoom to bitmap viewport. All right, uh, let's go back to the situation manager. Here we have on the left hand side the situation list, and above we have several icons to uh, create new situations, duplicate, delete, and open situations. Here on the, these arrows, again, just the same as before, you can see the list of layers that are assigned to a situation. Then in the center we see all the geofiles or layers that are available in the situations. The gray uh, files are basically selected with whatever situation. And again here we have options to create new geof uh, geofiles, duplicate, delete them. We can restore them uh, and restore it to a certain backup that we have. And we can also look at uh, list view or detail view. And here we also have the uh, visualization of the assignment. So here we can select a, um, a geofile and then it shows in which situation that geofile is currently assigned to. So here we have receptors, topo, commercial buildings, uh, road input, of course only in any situation that have the road in it. Um, then here on the right hand side, uh, just like before, we have a preview, <clears throat> we have a description, and the details when it was created or last it was changed. Then we have here a filter. A uh, filter, we can turn it on for certain um, uh, file names or dates of a certain geofile. So let me open up the situation. And here we can see the different docking menus and um, the overall graph user interface. So big change in terms of the uh, docking windows. Uh, so there is a lot of information that we can uh, visualize here in the geodatabase just because of the data structuring. So we have a overview uh, uh, dock docking window and a logbook. So these are two windows. In this case we have different tabs. We can add the other docs to the same tab if you like. Um, I 
my uh, default is overview of the logbook because I don't necessarily always look at the logbook. And with that, it's easily available. We can turn on and turn off uh, the docs right here. Um, so here we have the overview, and then here we have the logbook. So here we can uh, add the logbook or remove it. And then we also have here the geofile manager right here. So this shows all the geofiles that are currently open with the situation with the different parameters to see or not see, uh, to hide or to lock a uh, situation uh, geofile. Then below that are the object types. So this gives us an idea of all the different objects that we have currently in this situation. We can also see the sizing of coordinates, how they are displayed, and the counts of whatever object. So here we have three areas. We have 106 buildings. Uh, we have uh, 10 industrial buildings and a couple of line sources, generic lines, and uh, a railroad, and a couple of point sources. All right. Then we also have a 3D graphic dock uh, that we can turn on. There are multiple menus here at the top. Here, the object type that we can change the coloring and so forth. We can refresh. Uh, we can uh, change the settings. We can uh, move. So that is kind to move around. Uh, we can use the wheel on the mouse to change, move in, move out. And then we have here also the uh, hidden surface view, the wireframe view, or the uh, sitemap view. All right. So let me turn off the 3D graphics. So if you have a second monitor, you can have the 3D graphics on a uh, site project uh, on a second monitor. So you have all the information always uh, available. Now, uh, on this main menu, we can zoom in, zoom out with the mouse. And you can see here on the overview that we can see the, uh, the green outline of what we are seeing relative to the entire project. Uh, we can rotate the view. And you can see that it automatically rotates the view right here, too. Okay. Uh, we can go back to the reset right here. And that will show us everything. So here we have a, a north arrow. So this rotation is, I believe, every um, five degrees. So we uh, rotate the entirety of the project in five degree steps. Um, we can uh, move to the right and to the left. And uh, we can also zoom in uh, by, with the mouse. All right. Uh, the docking windows, you can uh, save them, uh, save globally, so that if you start a new project, the docking uh, will be automatically using the same configuration that you already selected. Um, and we can also load that if you've made changes and you want to go back to a default, you can load uh, that from the global settings. If you go back to the sound plan defaults, then it goes back to the setup of the sound plan uh, installation. All right, so let's get uh, started with some of the ribbons. The first one I want to discuss is the start ribbon, and that contains all the data input uh, for that's uh, required for initializing managing uh, georeference bitmaps. So here we have the objects. Here we can uh, change the view filters of the objects. We can change the views right here. We can change uh, select bitmaps that are in the background, uh, the angle modes for uh, entering, and then we can also have different selection types, select all. Uh, we can uh, clear selections, uh, clear selection or select by the certain prom uh, properties, the height, uh, the length, uh, area size. Um, and then we have here the property explorer. So here we have the uh, fundamentals ribbon, which is containing any import and export of geometry data. Uh, they also has the tools uh, to interface to digit uh, or create digital grounds, and then also to connect to online maps. 
So here on the on the very right again the object, uh, the view filters, and here we have the import. And like the import, there's more selections right here. Interesting here is the interface to TNM 2.5 and 3.1. Uh, note that for 2.5 you have to have TNM 2.5 loaded on your computer. TNM 3.1 you don't need TNM 3.1 to be installed on that computer. For 2.5, SoundPlan actually uses certain DLLs that are uh, going back to a, a interface or database interface that goes back from 1999. Um, then the export, again, we have uh, different exports here. I'll go again 2.5 and 3.1. We have a KML export and then also an S3 shapefile export. On the S3 shapefile export, uh, what one thing that is new that it also creates a project file, so that has all the uh, um, the georeferencing um, of the data um, and the coordinate system as part of the export. Then we have here we have all the DGM operation for calculate include uh, objects like roads or railroads. Uh, to set objects on the DGM or to uh, just uh, load and display the DGM in different ways. Then the next step is the uh, interfacing to online map services. Uh, open uh, Google Maps and OSM, just the same way as it was done previously. Um, and then here we have a couple of coordinate system uh, transformation option and the setting global uh, reference systems. Under the tool sections here, again, same thing, objects and view filters are the same. and But here we have uh, other geometry tools and building tools uh, for uh, data reduction purposes, right angle mode um, or a right angle mode, adding additional points, um, creating parallel objects, connecting objects uh, or lines uh, to create a polyline, or we have all kinds of building tools that uh, prepare building for facade calculation or clean up walls and, uh, or merging properties and so on, or give combining building areas. So there's a lot of additional uh, property uh, editing functions here. Uh, height tools, uh, that is uh, if you import elevation um, especially on top of the rooftop of buildings, how you can convert that into a building height. So here under the miscellaneous, uh, we contains uh, documentation of sources for ra road, railroads, and uh, source spectra and day histograms. It also has a documentation for photo points. Um, we have the pre-flight search objects right here. And then we also have different uh, ways of setting up uh, disabling colors uh, or kind of zoom boxes and so on. Under the logbook, well, this is kind of how to save the logbook or to print the logbook and so forth. All right, so this concludes the initial view uh, of the docking concepts. Um, and uh, thank you for listening.